Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went To Lose Gaming. A new abyss has been released and it's harder than ever. In this video, I'll be going over some tips and tricks for how to deal with the outrageous new Abyss 12. Before we dive into the guide portion of this video, here are some day one speedrunning strategies for the new Abyss 12. This portion serves as nothing more than some inspiration for some potential strategies and speedruns for this new Abyss. <laughs> Now let's hop into the guide portion of the video. First, let's take a look at the monster lineup and HP values for the new Abyss 12. Afterwards, I'll talk about some mechanics to make this Abyss a little bit easier, and then I'll recommend some teams. First of all, this new Abyss 12 has a total of 15,333,129 hit points. This is a ton of hit points, and keep in mind that you only have 3 minutes to 3 star each chamber. Now starting with 12-1-1, there are two waves in this section. The first wave has three Thunder Craven Rifthound whelps, which I will affectionately call Electro Puppies. And the second wave has two Thunder Craven Rift Hounds, which I will call Electro Doggos. The Electro Puppies each have 272,572 hit points, and the two Electro Doggos each have 795,002 hit points. This puts the total hit points of this 1211 section at 2,407,720 hit points. 1212 is very similar to 1211, except it has rock versions of the puppies and doggos. And for the second wave, instead of two big doggos, it has one big doggo and two puppies. In total, 12-1 has 4,565,582 hit points. And now is the perfect time to talk about doggo mechanics. Doggos are a bit different from most other elementally focused enemies. The doggos are actually weaker against the element that they happen to be, but with a twist. The puppies start off with 20% resistance to all elements, but after whacking the electro ones with some electro damage, the puppies do a little howl, go into rage mode which makes them attack more, and also, more importantly, they lose 30% resistance to the corresponding element. The Electro Puppies taking a few hits to lower their resistance to Electro is important because you need to hit them with Electro a few times before going for a big Electro Nuke like the first Slash of Raiden's Burst. 
The big electro doggos work very similarly, but instead starts with 25% resistances and lose a whopping 65% electro resistance after you whack them a few times with electro damage and they end up going into rage mode. Of course, for the Geo Doggos, instead of whacking them with Electro Damage, you just need to whack them with Geo Damage for the same corresponding resistance drops. Now, another important mechanic for the Doggos is that if you petrify them, they don't actually need to do the roaring animation to go into Rage Mode, and thus they still lose their resistances while petrified if you hit them with the corresponding elements. Now with the doggo mechanics out of the way, let's move on to the 12-2 lineup. 12 one has two Geo Vishafs. This is probably the easiest single section in the current Abyss 12. You fought these things a bunch, so I don't want to go through their mechanics. 12-2-2, on the other hand, is a pretty outrageous chamber. If you remember the Vagabond of the Sword event way back in the day, there are three Magukenki clone things. One Cryo, one Animo, and one Mask version. Each of these Magukenkis have 1,226,329 hit points. The cryo one does the cryo attacks, and you really need to watch out for the giant cryo slam. The animal one has a ranged multi wind slash attack, which is very dangerous and can only be easily dodged when you're close to it. The masked one, well, I think it does mask attacks, but it's generally the least aggressive and least threatening. I believe the cryo one neanders towards you, so if you stick on the animal one and try to get the animal one to blink backwards towards the other two, you can more easily hit two or even all three of them with some AoE damage. Damage. In my opinion, this triple Magu Kenki section is the most difficult part of the new Abyss 12. In total, 12-2 has 4,905,317 hit points. Now for 12-3. 12-3 has some doggos and robotos. I recommend hugging the Dorito robot in 12-3-1, so that way the crab robot will approach you. Then you'll want to apply the same knowledge from 12-1 on the second wave, which is against two big electro doggos. And 12-3-2 has two rock puppies and one big rock doggo for the first wave. The big rock doggo is Geo Enchanted and sends Geo Shockwaves at you. Fortunately, the second wave is just a couple of punching bags, aka two rune guards. So now that we know the full enemy lineup, what are my team recommendations? For the first half of Abyss 12, I think there are two dominant strategies for a 9 star Abyss clear. Keep in mind, I did not say for speedrunning, this is just for a 9 star Abyss clear. The first strategy is an electro damage focused strategy, with preferably Raiden as the main source of damage. An example team here is Raiden, an animal character like Venti or Kazuha, a damage buffer like Bennett and or Orsara, and a flexible fourth slot. Some other alternatives are other sources of electro damage like Beto, Fischl, or Kaching. Electro characters will gain a nice damage boost against the electro doggos due to the earlier explained mechanics. The other composition I recommend for the first half of Abyss 12 is a freeze comp. Freezing the big doggos will prevent them from teleporting all over the place, and you'll be able to wail on them for an extended amount of time. Obviously, the usual freeze carries like Ganyu and Ayaka are the most recommended. Both the freeze team and the electro team are great across all three chambers in the first half of the new Abyss 12. Grouping the monsters with Venti or Kazuha is also very useful across all three chambers in the first half of Abyss 12. Next, let's talk about the second half. It's clear that they want us to use Geo for the second half. If you have Zhongli, the second half is where you would want to use him. His petrification is a 4-6 to six second freeze versus the doggos, and with a Geo DPS character like Noel or Ito, you'll be able to do tons of Geo damage to the Geo doggos via the earlier mentioned doggo rage mechanic. As mentioned earlier, the doggos still go into rage mode even while petrified. Also, Zhongli will provide the extremely valuable, super durable shield for 12-2-2 against the triple Magu Kenkis, which all hit pretty hard. Next, I do recommend a healer, as Corrosion will still severely damage your team, even through Zhongli Shield. And finally, for 12-3-2, Zhongli Shield will help protect you against the Geo Shockwaves from the big Geo Doggo. Of course, there are so many viable teams, like for example the International Team, but these are my day one recommendations for the new Abyss 12. My last tip is to retry specific chambers with full energy or even different team comps if you're struggling with a specific chamber. And finally, the retry button is your best friend. What do you think about the massively increased HP pools of all the new monsters? Is this Abyss harder than you expected? Let me know what teams you plan to use for the new Abyss 12. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases 
DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.